Um, not necessarily. Not necessarily, because we're welcome to the Kingdom Church, where faith knows no limits. Within its walls, you'll encounter a remarkable spiritual leader, guided by divine vision, Bishop Climate. His journey illuminates the path to miracles and transformation. In the presence of Bishop Climate, miracles come alive. The sick are healed and chains of bondage are shattered. Well, the difference between a cast person and a cast, a cast means he is a courier, so that means he is carried. Open your heart to the wonders of faith. Discover the incredible destiny that awaits you. Let the extraordinary become your reality within the Kingdom Church. Step into a world of miracles. Step into the legacy of Bishop Climate and the Kingdom Church. Hello, hello. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for, uh, thank you for joining us at the Kingdom Temple. Um, and we want to welcome everyone for joining us. Uh, as we said, we're here to, to empower uh, brethren in financial freedom. We thank God for uh, for the house, and we thank God for uh, Bishop Clement, uh, and we thank everyone that is joining us. So we just wanted to quickly pray, Father. We thank you for yet another day, yet another life, another moment to glorify you, O Lord. Speak through me, Almighty God. Set your your people free from financial difficulties, from financial challenges. Every spirit of the of the enemy that want to put your people in financial bondage, Father, we set them free. Father, all the ideas that you've got and business ideas that you've got for us today, Father, provide the initial capital, Father. Open our eyes and show us the the treasure in the dark places. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We are very appreciative that you're able to join us with uh, today. Um, as we've said, this it's a seminar for us to um, to not give advice. We've got to make a disclaimer. We're not here giving advice. We're giving ideas of what people could do um, to be able to find yourself in a financial, uh, economic and financial f freedom. So today, we want to really speak about three, um, we want to cover three segments. One segment is touch a little bit on the real estate. I know there's quite a lot of people that say we want to do real estate, so we'll touch a little bit about real estate because with real estate you need lots of cash. But you first of all you need ideas, so you need experience, track record, uh, need lots of connection, and you need to have backers, people that would back you. So, um, so we'll touch a little bit on the real estate, but more on the. Uh, new easy entrance on this sort of um, you know I would say sort of Airbnb or let to let and then we will talk we will touch on how to potentially buy a business and what type of business you, you should buy um, that's really important and the third thing is how do you utilize your savings how do you utilize your saving? Lots of people have got saving in the normal banks. But there are also other banks that gives you better uh, return. If you are a, a little bit of risk, risk of that, um, you could look into the uh, uh, cryptocurrency, which you've got to be a someone that is open to learning new things um, so I will advise to have um, well not advice we will um, ask that people look into 
uh, how the which of the cryptocurrency they could um, invest their money. But I would say you start with an initial investment that you are able to afford to lose because that gives you a pattern on how to on how to um, know the trends within the cryptocurrency because that's one way of you doubling, tripling your money um, if, you, if you know the circle. So, today, this evening, we want to first of all start off on a bit of the real estate. Lots of people have asked me, oh, I want to do real estate, I want to do real estate. Um, still okay to do real estate, but you need at least five to ten years experience in real estate. And where properties have gone so high, um, you will be needing a minimum of 150 to 200,000 pounds to be able to get, enter the real estate. But there are other ways to enter the real estate because really it's about uh, accumulating capital. So investing your, your, your capital to make uh, IRR, what do I mean, initial uh, rate of return. So if you put 10 pounds onto something for simple mathematics, uh, you want to be able to be getting one pound 25 or one pound 50. One pound 50 is a great return, for example. Uh, one pound 25 is not bad, but you need to be able to turn money around. I say to a lot of people, money should be working for you, not you working for money. So money should be working for you, not you working for money. A good example is someone that is earning every monthly. Even though if it's 50, 100 pounds you're, you're putting aside to buy cryptocurrency, every month you put it aside. And do that, you know, do that for a year. I, I think when we started this last year, I said people should have a yearly strategy. This year I want to do this. I have maybe three, four ideas every year to want to do. And then you measure yourself by every quarter. So the first quarter is uh, January to March, uh, and then March to April, and then August, and then so there's four quarter in a year for people within the business world. So if you could imagine you're putting fifty hundred thousand, I mean hundred pounds into a some sort of uh, online crystal platform that you would get some sort of return. So effectively, you are, you're looking where you could put something like, I don't know, four, five, a thousand pounds, 1,200 pounds if you're doing it every month. And by the year, if, you're, if you have up to 5,000 pounds in your wallet, that's a good investment. Um, so we would, let's look at the rent to rent. What do we mean by rent to rent? This is where people uh, you, you know you rent someone's house for example or flats in a good location somewhere close to the, to the train station um, imagine I have a two three bedroom flats let's say random somewhere in North London let's say Highbury or let's go you know, um, a zone lower. Let's go, let's say Wood Green. Wood Green is a very good area because it's got loads of shop, loads of um, shopping mall, and it's got two stations, Tom Pank Lane and Wood Green. And also it's got Barman's, uh, Barnes Green. Barnes Green is very lovely, very green. So you've got three um, stations. And let's say you find a really nice two-bedroom um, or a house, because though is in zone, I think that's in zone two, zone three, is still very accessible. Um, and that's what you're looking at. So a rent to rent is where you rent someone else's property. You, you know, let's say I wanted 2,000 pounds, or no, probably 1,500 pounds a, a month for that two bedroom. And someone will come to me and say, look, I want to rent it out, and I need you to give me a license to be able to, to do a rent to rent. 
and I'll give you more. So I'll give you 1,600 or 1,800 pounds more. What do I mean by that? We will have an agreement that he or she will pay me 1,600 every month. But he or she will rent that two bedroom, probably in rooms, ideally, or houses are really nice. If you have a five bedroom house, and you imagine you're renting that out or Airbnb or any other platform. And you're renting that out maybe for 50, 80 pounds a night. A night. You will easily be able to double that, that monthly rent that you're supposed to give me. So effectively, you don't have to own the property. You don't have to go through mortgage. You don't have to have deposit. But you must have deposit of a month and a month for me, for example. So you give me a month, 1600 and deposit of 1600 But then, obviously, the deal would be, I would, you would probably said, I'll give you 1800 But what is important in a rent-to-rent -rent is you must find the time because someone needs to manage it. Someone needs to clean the room. Someone needs to get the room ready. Um, it's the, the, what, where that needs a lot of uh, attention is the management of the accommodation. In situations like that, you could be making lots of money. And if you imagine if you start with one property and you give yourself every six months, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go any lower than that, but every six months, that every six months you want to try and get another property. But for the first one, I would say you, you want to do it for a minimum of maybe 18 months so that you can learn all the ropes, all the, all the pros and cons, and you become a master. Uh, you must have an idea for good interior because your linear, the place needs to be spanking clean. Uh, maybe television in each of the rooms, nice carpet, you know, put nice flower vase, really something like someone is coming to an hotel but they're paying cheaper than the hotel I saw a girl on YouTube that started that and within two years or three years she was uh, raking in a revenue of three millions a year three million she started by she's in America uh, went to a neighbor never had his barns in a beautiful um, farm and told the neighbor that she wants to rent it and asked the neighbor to, get, to borrow her 2,000 pounds to fix it because it was just sitting down there without it. Um, the neighbor was not using it. So she obviously proposed to the neighbor that she'll be giving him revenue on an asset that's not doing nothing. And within two, three years, she had a revenue of $3 million dollars. With, with signing a, a lease for a warehouse, local warehouse, where she, they have all the chairs, all the linen, all the flowers, all the wind, um, uh, picture frame, it, she turned into a real operation. Then she said she was employing about 15 people. Salary for the 15 people was around $660. Sorry, $660,000, beg your pardon. So this thing work for those that want to get into real estate. That is a great, rev, a great um, you know, um, entrance for you to ent enter that rent to rent. It's called rent to rent. Uh, you don't have to hide it from the landlord. You let the landlord know your intention, and um, you obviously promote yourself on on uh, Airbnb. You sign all the necessary contracts. Um, you're covered from Airbnb because they will take all the deposits. As long as your accommodation or space has to look really incredible. Um, you could buy lovely linen from Mac and Spencer, nice vase. I mean, you could make the, the place really nice. So that's one very easy. I mean, I would say you need something like between three to four, five thousand pounds 
to start that. Three to four, five thousand pounds to start something like that. And it could be two people that come together and say, look, okay, you put two to two and a half down, two and a half down. Because it just gives you the ability to be able to give the, the property owner a deposit. And you still need a deposit to be able to renovate it, dress it up. Really, really nice. Very, very important. Um, that's one avenue to enter into the real estate. And I will recommend that to anyone that has that kind of uh, uh, money. You will make your money back. A minimum of 3000 to 5000 will start that off. You might start with a one-bedroom um, in a very good location. And um, because quite often people, tourists, uh, businessmen, people that want to do an anniversary don't really want to stay in the hotel because you're more cheaper than the hotel. And they would, and that's why Airbnb is doing very well. Lots of people have started there. Um, you know, you become your own boss, but it doesn't mean that you become complacent, but you've got to work hard. It's a very hard work. But as I said, a girl quit her job, and within two or three years, she was revenue. She has a rev she had a revenue of around three million. I'm sure she's exceeded it now. Um, so that's one way of really entering into the property market. What that gives you gives you a constant revenue. In the next few weeks, I'll talk about having other um, multiple income streams. It's very important to have a multiple income stream, consistent multiple income stream. For people that work, that, has a, that have a regular job, that have regular job, I would say that you look for a side hustle. Really important not to just rely on your salary alone, on something you feel comfortable with, something you really like. Uh, so today we, we've talked about Airbnb. It's, I would recommend it for anyone... You know, come in as a partner, uh, bring a two thousand pounds and or two and a half. Your partner bring the same, but you must really have eyes for uh, getting the right property. And as I said, a lot of landlord would not mind, provided you're managing it well. Uh, you want to get a good review on Airbnb, so your you know the properties need to be absolutely clean. That's that. Then. I, the next thing I want to talk about is going a business. Um, I would recommend someone that doesn't have a drive for business not to do this. You could buy businesses, but um, yeah, there, there, are, there are lots of ways to buy businesses without putting no money down, but uh, you'll still need legal fees, and those go run into hundreds of thousands. But... There are ways you could buy companies, really mega companies, companies that are turning over millions without putting much money down. But we're not going to target that. We're going to target smaller businesses because the idea is for you to have a constant income. And if you have a lot of corner shops, corner shops want to sell their businesses because a lot of those corner shops are run by um, Retirees, for example, um, you'd be surprised how you could buy a business that um, the owner wants to retire. Because really, he's been running that for me for 10 years or for 11, so he doesn't have the enthusiasm anymore. He's probably made enough money and he wants to retire. Uh, retirement. You know, buying a retirement company is the best one to buy. Because quite often, the owner could even fund your, could, could fund your acquisition. And we're going through one now. The owner could fund the, uh, when I mean fund, F-U-N-D, could provide you with a bit of loan. Um, because it's a very interesting business. Now, if you have a local corner shop that sells normal food uh, and the rest of it, but you could, someone could turn that into a very specialist uh, convenience store by engaging your local, the local resident, understanding what they want, do a survey, 
understand what really they want. How do you want? How did they? How do you? How did they want you to serve them? And you stock that, and you do perhaps you do a a local delivering. I mean, back gone are the days where people will read newspaper. Uh, all the newspapers now online, or people hardly read newspaper now. People now have um, replaced newspaper with YouTube, TikTok, and all the rest of it. But anyway, um, you can imagine the reason why the big supermarket have cornered that sector, because people are getting lazier. People want convenient nowadays. So the likes of the three or four big supermarket would provide home delivery. What would be great if you know your customer and you provide them with exactly what they want? So your stock, your 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 um, stocking what your customer want. Um. So how do you buy a small convenience store? The, why do you, sorry, why, how and why would you buy a convenience store? Let's do how, first of all. Um, there are loads of convenience store in online. If you put it online, wants to buy a convenience store, there are brokers that specialize in that, companies that specialize in there, and we get all different companies that wants to sell. There are people that are very uh, keen to sell their businesses now. And if you know what you're doing, you could scale up those businesses. What do we mean by scaling up? It means, for example, I was talking about a convenience store. And quite often, someone that's sort of lost the enthusiasm, the store is run down, it's not, it's not, been, it's not been decked well, the stock level is low. The interest is not there. The spirit is not there. So you buy a, a convenience store that's turning over maybe under under thousand pounds or one fifty. Some of them really turn up to two hundred thousand pounds. And quite often, a lot of this will have stock. So stock is money. The stock that the business had in inventory is money is part of the valuation of that business. So the bank would take that into consideration. The money that is, the company has in the bank account is also part of the, the business asset. And quite often, the owner cannot touch that. It's the actual value on the business. So it's the stock, the, the stock, the equity, which is the name it's like saying you want to buy Nike. Nike. Nike itself is worth hundreds of million. The name Nike. Um, so assuming he has a good rapport with the, with the local. So, but more importantly as well is the cash, the stock that he has. What one could do is you could ask the owner... If he's a keen seller and he wants to move, tell he or she to lend you part of the money you need to give to the bank. Loan you on a separate agreement where you pay him every month. So you pay him a lump sum, but you also pay him, he could loan you. Let's say you need 50K. You, you probably have to put around 10, 20, 50 grand. I mean, for those that have good credit, the bank would fund you. For those that have... Um, properties that's got a bit of equity in there you could do that and there's ways to get money on your credit card but anyway that's another another story um but if you think about it you're buying the the equity as in the value of that business an existing business that's been running for four five six seven ten years some of those corner shop 15 years and now you go to a new supplier and do a deal with the supplier. And the supplier now will, will provide, will supply you with 
goods. And quite often, if you have a good credit, card, a credit rating, they'll give you 20, 20, 28 days to pay. Some of them 30 days, but 28 days to pay. So you, store, you stock up the, um, the store, you give you a nice facelift, you do a survey on, on, the, on, the, on the resident, what they're looking for, how you could serve them, what do they want. Um, you, you really just take a store that's made probably, probably making, I don't know, five, ten thousand pounds a, a, a week, no, sorry, a month. You could easily take that to thirty, forty thousand pounds a month. Because now you're providing what the, the local resident wants. Um, that's what we call scaling up. You're taking something that is only worth under and twenty thousand or one fifty, and in a year, in two years' time, you could say to yourself, "I want this business to be turning over two hundred thousand." That's scaling the business up. Um, the good thing about businesses like that is, if you've got the right area, it could be a cash cow. What do we mean by cash cow? Something that gives you money every day, constant money, constant money. And if you are a, a good strategic person, if for example, your rent, your you know, the, your debtor, your debt to your debtors, uh, let's say it's 20,000 pounds a month, um, but you're doing 50, 40,000. If you're able to save five, 10,000 pounds a month and you scale it up, give yourself a, a six month, an eight months, a 12 months, and then the next year you give yourself a, a, vi a very high target, um, a, a business you, you bought for, I don't know, 50K, 30K, in two years' time, if that business is making 200,000, you've scaled that business up three, four, four times. It's easier for you to buy a, a, a business than for you to start one. For people like us, we know what the pain is. But you must go buy something that you really enjoy. Really enjoy um, where you could make a difference. I would recommend people to look into that because that gives you a constant, regular cash. And if you now say to yourself, in five years' time, I want to sell that business, and in five years, if you're able to sell it for 200, 250,000, not only you're making a long time profit, but you're also making a medium, short to medium time current cash and if you're one that is ambitious you could say okay you understand the business in two years time I want to buy another one and um, I mean I've got a few ideas on you know what type of which areas you'd buy I'll probably say areas that you could see that the demographic is changing um without going any further. But anyway, so often you would get banks that would give you cash, with, they loan you because they're loaning you with a business, a business that has regular income. Because if a bank loans you that, you'll be able to repay. But you've got to be very, very uh, focused, uh, financial savvy, business savvy. Um, it's very important. So if you have a strategy to say within five years, you want to have five store, that's one store a year. That's an amazing business. Um, previously, this, this sort of business of buying petrol station was really good, but not anymore. Because the whole of sustainability, um, they're not, those guys are not making much now. But if you have a so if you, if, you, if you think about it, you buy a convenience store, and in, two, in four years, you've got two or three, which is turning over. Each of them is turning over 200,000. And it's, it's doable. You know, you bring a, a little bit of um, pastry, have uh, fruits, have, you know, uh, specific, specialist food product. You provide services to deliver into their home. A local delivery, you know, because... Lots of people want to do business with local businesses. Um, 
what you're doing now is that your net worth is the total, um, the total turnover of your business. So if you have three, and each of them is turning over 200,000, so you're effectively, with maybe other asset, your network is about 600,000. Your gross network is about 600,000. Your net is down to what you make as profit, net profit. So net is minus the cost of goods, your liability, mainly your liability, uh, minus the credit, and then your corporate type liability, your tax, taxes and stuff like that. But if you're to do your um, your asset and liability, your um, A and L, it's the gross turnover you put there. So at this point now, if you want to buy a property, it's very easy for you to say you want to go and buy a property. Very easy. So we're now getting into an integrity of business for people that have been following us for the last um, three, four months or more. I'm so sorry. Uh, before we were talking about businesses where you could do a business without having money. Um, now we're going into businesses that, assuming you've made a bit of money, you now want to go to real business. Um, as I said, rent to rent on Airbnb. Um, convenience store, buying a local convenience store that's run down because you're taking on the lease. Um, yeah. So those are great, great idea. Then we're now talking of going into a bit of um, cryptocurrency. Lots of people would say to me, oh, well, should I do it? Yes, but you have to be very careful. There's a lot of scam. Lots of scam on that, on many platforms. You're looking for the real name that are well established in the, in the line of um, cryptocurrency. Um, but as I said, I would suggest you start with 100 pounds first or 250. You buy um, you know, you, you, you buy you know, you buy um, bit by bit. Maybe, as I said, 50 pounds a month, 100 pounds a month um, and you build from there. If you manage to buy at low, as it, as it climbs up, you are therefore going to be making the value of your, your currency will go up. Um, there are certain exchange that would allow you to obviously put that money, in, I mean the currency in the pockets, in your wallet, and some are becoming quite sophisticated where you could, you could actually buy um, goods and services with your grips of currency. Um, I would suggest I would suggest people go into onto the on, onto the website and investigate what, which one um, there's, a, there's loads of crypto um, cryptocurrency but you want to be very careful. You want to buy one that has a great future, that they have the right um, um, structure in place. Um, I would advise that you use maybe the, the big four because there's a lot of scam. I would advise that you try not to buy from brokers because I've got a friend that um, well, lost, not almost, lost almost three to 50K uh, and I told him not to do it, but anyway, he still to when to do it um, yeah there are three to four big ones uh, in terms of crystal currency that's the f money of the future so if you're working nine to five earning every month that's a great way to start your investment it's a great great way to start investment um, you know we've talked about drop shipping, buying merchandise without you having to store it, you know, um, 
uh, providing services. Um, is, you know, we've discussed businesses that you don't really need money to start. And now we're not going into more tangible businesses. Um, and as I said, if you're doing nine to five um, out there, there's no reason why you couldn't invest fifty pounds every month. You could, you could, you could decide to go with two currents, a uh, cryptocurrencies, and you just put fifty pounds in each of them every month and see what, um, what, um, and that's a learning curve, because yes, although they go up and down, but relatively, they go up. There are people that started. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, that they are multi-millionaire in terms of cryptocurrency. Uh, but you've got to study. You've got to be someone that will come back from work. You will look at the currency. I mean, you'll look at the crypto. You'll look at the, the indexes. You, will, you need to feed yourself with information on the cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah, I guess that's... Um, those, are the, those are the three key... Um, business we want to really discuss today. Um, if I actually choose of, out of those three, I would say find a business. But you probably have to, you probably have to uh, give up on your job because you need somebody to run the, 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 the corner shop or your convenience shop for you. Um, you could still be working if you have the right systems in place. That means your inventory has to be excellent. You must know what is in the store, have those electronics, uh, data, um, uh, uh, sort of um, payment machine at your, at your, um, in your convenience store. But if you're able to scale up in terms of delivering to your customer and your customer paying you by credit card or even created a club where they could put money into a club and they're buying, so they're paying you in advance, right? They're paying you in advance into a, into a what, we, what, what I'll suggest you open a, a client's account. So you might encourage them to um, put money into that account, maybe 20 pounds, for example, for the children. So when they're not around, the children come and, could come and buy, come and pick something up from, from the store. It means that you've got access to credits that they're not using. And let's say you're doing that, you have 200 customers that's doing that every year round, every month, every year round. That's a very good um, cash because you could utilize that cash because it's just sitting there, and that form part of your. It forms part of your. Um, it actually do forms part of your. Um, uh, your income, and that means that you have to have a small van. To deliver to your customer. That's a more um, it's a more bespoke services um, and you could even extend that to say okay look we're not we're not we're not bushes but we could provide you with specific um, um, you know po um, products whether you do a deal with a local good busher, there's many, many ways in doing that. Food is one of the best business you could do. Um, food, real estate, finance, stock, uh, gold. Um, those who could afford gold, there are gold companies that you could actually buy a fraction, fraction of purchase. Every year, I mean, every month you could again put 50 pounds into in buying a gold company, uh, a gold bar. A gold bar is worth 
more than the currency you have. These are, this is targeting those that has a nine-to-five job, that have got good credit and have been in a nine-to-five from, for two, three years. Um, first thing you want to do is to build your credit. If you have any bad credit, write to the credit agency. Let them send you your credit um, report so you know exactly where, where the damage are and you could resolve that. But um, those, who, those who have the 9 to 5 job are in a very, very good position because they have a, a regular income and they want to turn that regular income into a side hustle. Multi, a multi, multiple income. Amazing. Um, so for me, if I'm to pick any of those three ideas, I will pick the convenience store because it's a real business. Um, you've got to run it well. It's got to be one that has potential uh, that you want to survey the, the area. There are areas in London that are becoming quite affluent and people want special, you know, specialty. You know, you could have a small part of there where you sell pastry, really lovely pastry, different breads. You want to encourage people to come there. You have a nice uh, coffee machine, nice tea. I mean, you could be, you could sort of specialize specialize in things that your local customer will want. Then all of a sudden, a convenience store that is running run down. You know, put a new a new branding in it. You brand it differently. And um, by the time you know it, if you've got it right, you've got it done well, you could start franchising it. It's an idea there. But um, for me, that's, that, that's the business I like the most out of all the... Um, because from that is what we call a... Uh, you could diversify because that's giving you a constant cash. But that means you have to be able to go and buy stock. And there are many uh, wholesale. Yeah, there are whole, wholesale. From there, you could do a, you know, a leaflet that you hang, um, hand out to, you know, post to many of the local labels. Things that you can't stock, but you could get your hands on it. You could, you know, you could, and they could order it. You could have a website that they will put an order through um, th now that you're now potentially looking at business that could be doing 300,000 a year. Um, there was a, um, a family, I think it's probably four, four of them, that bought, uh, I mean, as I said, petrol station uh, are not the best nowadays, but they are making almost is it 25 to 40 million a year by starting with one and then they went into buying one more two three i think by the time i saw the the documentary they probably had about four or five petrol station because though the margin in the f in the in the petrol it's little it's the constant cash because if you can imagine you run a business that you have a million pounds there every year, it's turning over five million every year. The bank is seeing the money that's going through your account, not necessarily your margin, but it's seeing the cash that's going through your, your, um, your business. Um, so it's important to go through to, you know, to buy strategic businesses, business that people would need the product every day. So best you start with a local business, not something national. Um, lots of guys that have bought um, Subway. Subway's franchise was very, very cheap before. No anymore. Um, but that's probably at risk because quite a lot of people are not going to, to the office. The, the um, walking home sort of culture is now bringing those sort of businesses to risk. But um, yeah, that's the, I would prefer that business more than any other um, because it's easy entering, 
low capital and uh, requirement to enter but if it's done very well it could you know you could you know you could you can make a good good cash um, you can make a good business out of that something that will now uh, explain you to doing other things in terms of uh, in terms of business because business is about having a continuous constant cash where with good margin when you run a business that you slim line the operation meaning everything it's at slim line straight line um, you don't want any disruption and there is you manage that and you put it in line it means slim line um, as I said you brand it so they know they know what you're what you're good for what your etox is serving the local community it's a good etox and as I said there are a number of those businesses available because a lot of people that run that is either family run and as you can imagine as the the children are growing up they're not really interested in running businesses like that um, I, I once had a well still has them as a client um, they, they've been doing leather for third generation I mean they probably make millions they supply Harrods or the big stores all the manufacturing is done in India all the manufacturing uh, now they've got a real estate they want to sell of 15 million plus but none of the children is interested in continuing the leather business not interested um, so would I buy a leather sh business? No, I wouldn't buy a leather business because le leather is no longer in fashion. And the, um, meaning leather jacket, leather, 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 leather kind of garments. The, the, the business, um, there's no business there anymore. But that gives a lot of people idea, but there's a lot, you know, I mean, there's loads of ideas of what business to do. It's quite often people don't have the initiative. I also like the Airbnb. That's a great business too. But that needs a good, someone with a good vision, hard working, someone that's got good management skill. Really good management. I mean, on, on both the business. So the convenience store and the Airbnb or uh, rent to rent is what it's called. It's the, that's a really good ways of making money too. But I, like I said, I think the um, the uh, convenience store would be much, much better. It takes, you would have to work not 9 to 5, 24 hours. But if, if it's run well and you put the right structure in place, there's no reason why you couldn't employ people to run that for you, making sure your inventory uh, the security, payment of your payment structure, uh, method of payment is all watertight, meaning you encourage more credit card. Um, you do a, a you know you your you do a robust um, inventory, meaning your stock, so no one is stealing stuff from from your um, from the store. Um, you know, ideally, you want to start running. Uh, you want to have two. By the time you have two, you just become a supervisor in that. Um, so, yeah, I hope that um, that's been very helpful. Um, I think next next week we will look at um, uh, we will look at other businesses that are moving pretty well. Coffee is another amazing business. Uh, if you think about what um, the likes of uh, Coffee Nero, uh, Starbucks, um, I, mean, I don't drink coffee, but if you walk in there, you're spending 12, 15, maybe between 8 and 12 pounds per person. It's been designed that way. It's not because those things are expensive, it's just been designed that way. I was telling a friend yesterday that this guy's gone secure the beans in um, in South America, whichever way, Colombia, 
Peru, and they secure it for a three, four, five years harvest, paying the same, paying the same rent. For a farmer, he has continuity. For the coffee companies, they're making tons of money because the coffee they sell to you for three, five pounds is probably costing, no exaggeration, probably five, 50p or 55 pence. So there's a huge margin. There's probably, I don't know, 30, 40% margin in that. So when you go to the West End and you got sales, and I said 50% off, it's truly 50% off, but even within that 50%, they're still making margin. I think for those guys, probably under and something percent margin they're making. Um, so yeah, it's, I hope it's something people have, I hope that's been helpful. And I pray that people actually embanked and um, take down board. It's, we're here to empower uh, the body of Christ to, um, to be more economically and financially empowered. And nothing should, um, should weigh you of, of this. The more you're involved in, the more you're pursuing something, the better, the more you will learn. And the more you'll have an understanding in business, but you'd have to pray to the Lord for wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Um, but look, I hope the uh, the session has been helpful, and um, we thank God. Um, as I said, um, you know, two, three, four f family could come together and and do that convenience talk. We thank God, Father. We thank you for this afternoon or this evening. We give you all the glory, Almighty God. Uh, and banking us new wisdom, Lord, new knowledge. Open new ideas, Almighty God. We give you the glory. God that give all wisdom and knowledge. Increase our knowledge, Almighty God. Open doors. Give us great opportunities, Lord. Let your people find means and ways to do these businesses. Almighty God destroy every shackle of poverty from the enemy. Almighty God, we thank you for life. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for knowledge. Thank you for understanding. Grant us, Almighty God, spirit of excellence, and let us find mercy before you and your grace. Uplift us, Almighty God. We ask for open doors. We ask for destiny help, Almighty God. We thank you. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning into Bishop Climate Ministries. We are blessed to share these moments of prayer, wisdom, and revelation with you. We would like to extend our profound gratitude to our dedicated partners and members. Your generous contributions and unwavering support have been the cornerstone of our ministry's growth and impact. To our esteemed viewers, we invite you to join our vibrant spiritual family. Partnering with Bishop Climate Ministries, you become a part of a faith-rooted community. The benefits of joining us are manifold, from being part of a vibrant, supportive community to gaining access to enlightening teachings and sharing in the blessings that come from serving God's mission. If you are moved to support today's program, we've made it easy for you to do so. Simply visit our website at www.perfectclimate.co.uk and click the Donate button. Remember, any contribution, big or small, supports our television broadcast program and serves as a key, unlocking the breakthrough that God has promised you. For a deeper connection, you are welcomed at our prophetic hour every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. No appointment needed. God is going to use those dreams to sort out something with his heart. We also invite you to attend our powerful Prophet Miracle Services every Friday at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 9 a.m. for Push Prayer Service, 11.30 a.m. for Sunday Word Service, and 3.30 p.m. Should you be unable to join us in person, please reach out to us on our UK hotline at plus 44 20 77 38 36 68 or for our friends in the USA. Please call 1-347-708-708. 1449. As we draw this broadcast to a close, 
Let us remember that every act of giving and receiving makes a profound difference. It is your support that allows us to continue our mission and in return, you are part of the blessings we share. Together, we can continue to grow, empower, and change lives. Stay blessed, stay connected, and we look forward to welcoming you again. God bless you all.